At 5.17 p.m., a quiet Sunday in northeastern Japan turned into chaos. In less than five seconds, the calm hum of daily life was replaced by a deep rolling thunder from beneath the ground. Windows rattled, alarms blared, and the sea began to pull away from the coast. A magnitude 6.7 earthquake had struck off the Senriku coast, one of the most seismically active regions on Earth. To the people of Iwate Prefecture, it felt like history was repeating itself. The ground that once swallowed their homes in 2011 was moving again. But this was no ordinary tremor. It was shallow, just 10 kilometers beneath the ocean floor, the kind of quake that transfers its full force straight upward. Within moments, tsunami alerts flashed across television screens, sirens wailed, families ran for higher ground, and scientists began asking a chilling question. Is Japan's most dangerous fault line waking up again? The shaking had barely stopped when sirens pierced the cold November air. In towns along the Sanriku coast, emergency systems kicked in instantly, a choreography Japan has rehearsed for over a decade. Evacuation routes filled with residents moving calmly but urgently toward higher ground. In Yamada and Miyako, loudspeakers echoed through narrow streets. Tsunami Keiho, tsunami warning. Within minutes, rail lines were halted, highways closed, and fishing boats abandoned at the docks. The ocean, once a source of life for these small towns, had suddenly become an enemy again. Local news stations cut into regular programming, broadcasting aerial footage of the coastline. Waves appeared normal at first, but every camera stayed fixed on the horizon. For a nation that still remembers the black water of 2011, even a gentle swell can send chills down the spine. Officials confirmed the quake's depth at roughly 10 kilometers, shallow enough to deliver its full energy to the surface. The meteorological agency warned that this kind of event often triggers secondary tremors in nearby faults. And sure enough, Less than an hour later, the first aftershock rolled through. Magnitude 6.3. Doors shook, car alarms wailed, and the uneasy realization settled in. This was not over yet. For many in northeastern Japan, earthquakes aren't just physical events, their memories buried in the ground. The region still carries scars from the Great East Japan earthquake of 2011. That disaster, a magnitude 9.0 rupture, unleashed one of the most powerful tsunamis in recorded history, claiming more than 18,000 lives and triggering the Fukushima nuclear meltdown. Since that day, Japan has invested billions in seawalls, early warning systems, and education programs. Every school child learns evacuation drills. Every household keeps an emergency pack. Yet even with all this preparation, the ground's unpredictability remains undefeated. When Sunday's quake struck, power briefly flickered across parts of Iwade and Aomori. Train lines along the Tohoku coast suspended service. And for a few tense hours, the entire northeastern corridor of Japan held its breath, waiting to see if the sea would rise. The tsunami alert was eventually downgraded, but experts cautioned that the cluster of aftershocks pointed to continued instability, a sign that deep tectonic adjustments were still unfolding beneath the Pacific. What would you do if your city faced constant reminders that the next quake could strike at any time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. It's fascinating how preparation changes mindset. To understand why this region shakes so violently, you have to look beneath Japan itself. The entire archipelago sits atop the meeting point of four massive tectonic plates, the Pacific, Philippine Sea, Eurasian, and North American plates. Here along the Sanriku coast, the Pacific Plate dives beneath the North American Plate in a process called subduction. Every year, that movement adds only 8 centimeters of compression, slower than a fingernail grows. But over decades, that tiny motion builds unimaginable pressure. Eventually, the rock can't take it anymore. It snaps. When it does, the energy released travels as seismic waves at nearly 7 kilometers per second, through bedrock, through ocean, through entire cities. If the rupture happens beneath the seafloor, those waves can lift or drop the ocean bed by several meters, displacing billions of tons of water and creating a tsunami. What makes the Sanriku coastline so vulnerable is its unique shape. Deep bays and steep cliffs funnel incoming waves into towering walls of water. In 2011, that natural amplification turned what should have been 3-meter waves into 30-meter monsters. This geography hasn't changed. Only the vigilance of the people has. Researchers from Kyoto University's Disaster Prevention Institute note that recent seismic clusters suggest stress is migrating north along the subduction boundary. It's not a prediction of a major quake, but a warning that energy is on the move. <laughs> Over the next 24 hours, more than a dozen aftershocks were recorded, each one smaller but psychologically heavier. For locals, every tremor reopens wounds that never fully healed. 
Families still displaced from 2011 now live in sturdier homes, yet many keep emergency kits by the door, a habit learned the hard way. Government agencies reported no immediate fatalities, though several injuries occurred during evacuations. Infrastructure held firm, a testament to Japan's modern engineering. Bridges swayed but didn't break, skyscrapers danced but didn't fall. Still, the emotional toll lingers, proof that progress and fear coexist here, side by side. Scientists reviewing the data noted how quickly the aftershocks followed the main event, a pattern indicating that the quake may have reactivated smaller faults within the same zone. These interconnected fractures can remain unstable for days or even weeks. It's a reminder that the Earth's crust is not solid. It's a living, shifting mosaic of rock under tension. And beneath that tension lies a mystery that continues to drive research. Why do some regions store energy for centuries before releasing it, while others shatter repeatedly within decades? Japan's relationship with earthquakes is paradoxical, fear mixed with acceptance. The nation has turned survival into a form of discipline. Buildings are designed to flex. Subways stop automatically when tremors begin. Even vending machines display emergency notices during crises. But no technology can fully erase the uncertainty that follows. When the ground itself becomes an unpredictable force, humanity is reminded of its limits. Each new event becomes both a test and a lesson. Experts emphasize that constant education is Japan's greatest defense. Children in elementary schools along the coast grow up understanding evacuation routes before they memorize multiplication tables. Entire communities hold yearly drills simulating the worst scenarios to build muscle memory that could save lives. This culture of preparedness may not eliminate risk, but it transforms fear into readiness. Globally, scientists are using Japan's dense network of seismographs as a window into the mechanics of plate tectonics. Every quake here provides data how energy builds, how waves propagate, how faults interact. This information feeds into global models that help forecast hazards from California to Chile. In that sense, every tremor in Japan tells a story far beyond its shores. Yet the deeper lesson is human. Despite technology, research, and planning, true control remains out of reach. The Earth's surface is in constant negotiation with the forces beneath it, shifting, grinding, rewriting landscapes, and lives alike. Japan's resilience lies not in conquering nature, but in adapting to it. By sunrise, the tsunami warnings had been lifted. Fishermen returned cautiously to the docks. Television crews packed up equipment, and the headlines began to fade from global attention. But for those who lived through the shaking, normalcy doesn't return that easily. In a coastal school gym converted to a temporary shelter, an elderly woman told reporters she had fled with only her slippers. Her voice was calm, practiced, as if she had repeated this drill many times before. Around her, families waited for official confirmation that the danger had passed. Outside, the sea looked serene again, its surface betraying none of the violence that had just occurred. For now, the damage is minimal, but the deeper truth remains. The same tectonic pressure that devastated this coastline 14 years ago is still accumulating deep below the Pacific. It will release again, someday, somewhere along Japan's endless fault lines. The question isn't if, but when. Earthquakes remind us that the ground beneath our feet is not still. It's alive, restless, and ancient. Every vibration, every shifting plate, is part of a planetary heartbeat that has pulsed for billions of years. And though we've mapped, measured, and monitored, we've only begun to understand its rhythm. For Japan, that understanding is both burden and strength. Each new quake is a test of systems, of culture, and of memory. A reminder that preparedness is not a choice, but a way of life. If you found this story insightful, share your perspective in the comments. How does your region prepare for nature's extremes? And if you value deep, fact-driven stories about our changing planet, consider subscribing to support more reporting like this. Because the Earth will move again. And when it does, we'll be here, documenting the story it tells.